Well, I'm most certainly a sight for sore eyes this morning. <sighs> I am not feeling fresh. This face does not look very fresh, but it is a family tradition that we always go on a walk on Easter Sunday all together. So we are heading up to the magnificent church. I actually took you there with mummy on my last trip to Mallorca. And I truly hope you guys can hear me because although the sun is shining and we've got bright blue skies, it is just a little bit windy this morning. But my goodness me, three vodkas. <sighs> I do not know how much vodka that man pours in those vodka and tonics. The food was sensational, but I feel absolutely shocking this morning. But I do think getting out and having fresh air is going to hopefully, <laughs> hopefully being the operative word, revitalize me. Oh gosh, I'm definitely a wounded, wounded mountain goat this morning. Anyway, I'm going to jog up to the rest of the farm and we're going to head up to the church. And we're just going to have the most amazing day. I'm truly hoping I'm going to feel a little bit better later. We're gonna to have to get the lamb in. We've got the Moroccan vegetables. We've got so many delicious things that we are cooking and baking today. Mummy has in fact actually stolen the entire menu. We'll be doing slight little changes. And of course she is the most incredible cook and chef. And actually everything that I've learned, I've learned from Mummy. So it will be so lovely to actually just spend some time with Mama in the kitchen and just have the most divine day. The table is looking a little bit sort of less, how would I say, um, lifeless? than yesterday. Obviously that's because the yellow is now turning into dried flowers, but I think it's looking gorgeous and hopefully everybody else will think the same. Anyway, I am way behind everybody else. So I'm gonna go for a little jog, try not to throw up on the way. God, I feel shocking. Why do we do it? Why do we do it? Anyway, oh, praying that I feel better and happy Easter everybody. Well, by the time you see this, Easter will actually be over. So I truly hope you guys all had the most divine and special and happy and healthy Easters. Um, anyway, I will see you in a bit.
So the lamb legs are ready for the oven. So as you saw me just prepping them, so we've got some beautiful, beautiful legs of lamb here. And we're gonna do them slightly differently. We're gonna do low and slow. We're gonna cook it for about four hours. And as you can see, it's on a bed of beautiful vegetables. Doesn't have to be chopped up to perfection, just something for it to lay on. And basically what we've done, we've put lots of olive oil, salt and pepper. As you saw, I've studded it with garlic. And then I have done, <laughs> explaining my florals um, and then we've got the anchovies on the top but use the anchovy oil it'll be absolutely delicious so then again this is the other one and we've got some squash we've got red onions celery carrots we've also got um, olive oil and red wine at the bottom there so it's going to be really really moist and it's going to be absolutely delicious <laughs>
definitely looking and feeling a lot more like myself. I have just very, very quickly popped a dress on, put some makeup on, a little bit of dry shampoo in the hair, and Bob is your uncle. Feeling so much better. The walk definitely freshened things up. Felt like absolute death, in all honesty, up that hill. Mummy and I were really really channeling our inner strength at that point. Anyway, all completely self-inflicted, hanging like you cannot believe, but I'm going to have a hair of the dog and the party shall go on. So I've got my gorgeous Goelia number on, obsessed with this dress. The quality versus price point is phenomenal. I'm absolutely obsessed. It's got this little bardo neckline. You've got the belt, which is gorgeous, and it's just such a swishy little number. I'm obsessed. I will, of course, leave that linked down below. I don't actually yet have a full length mirror, so I feel like I show you everything here, but there's a lot to look at <laughs> here. But but anyway, as you saw this morning, we have been prepping and primping. Wave to the camera, Cammy. <laughs> we have been doing lots and lots of prep, but lunch is going to be scrum didiocious. But there is a fair little bit to do, so we're going to just assemble everything. Um, and now that I look the part, I definitely feel better. We need a little drinky poo and let's get this Easter celebration started. Back in the kitchen and it is time to put our bulgur wheat salad all together. So I've got the bulgur wheat here and actually I steamed it with a tiny bit of the pomegranate juice. And so it's gone a little bit of like a pinky color but it is absolutely delicious. And what I've done is I've actually popped it in here for about 45 minutes just to let it cool. So it's really important that the bulgur wheat is not hot. And then you saw me prepping all of the toppings and it's all about the toppings. So we've got cucumber, make sure you chop it up really, really small and finely. And then you literally just sprinkle it evenly all around on the top. All the juices will soak into that beautiful fruit. Then we're gonna go in with the papaya and we're gonna sprinkle that around. It is honestly the brightest, most vibrant salad. It is so scrumptious and it's an absolute winner with all of our family. There's not one person that doesn't absolutely love it. We've then got the mango and you wouldn't normally think that this would be something that you would want you know, it's quite a sweet dish, but it's not. That bulgur wheat is just so scrumptious. So we're gonna just keep adding all of the toppings. And I then leave it almost like a little bit of a showpiece and then I'll toss at the very last moment. So we've got our mango, we've then got dried cranberries. Just make sure to break those up a little bit. And there really isn't anything so special about the quantities. Really just do as, as you like. If I had more cucumber, I probably would put a touch more cucumber. However, we have used all of the cucumber. There goes the dried cranberries. Then again, another thing about this salad, you need to use so much mint. Lots and lots of mint, lots and lots of coriander, and it is absolutely delicious. It's so, so fresh. Gonna go in with that chopped mint. What I would suggest is to keep it really, really small so you don't get too many large mouthfuls of that. Then we're going to sprinkle the pomegranate seeds on the top. And I can't wait to show this to you because it really is a showstopper. Sprinkle those pomegranate seeds in with the pistachios. And then the final piece de la resistance with this is toasted pine nuts. Now, what I would actually suggest to do is leave the pine nuts until the very last moment, because otherwise they actually go a little bit soggy. So those are in a frying pan just on the top of the hob behind me, and I'm not going to do them until we are sort of five or six minutes off of serving. But to give you guys a bit of a close up, this is what our salad is currently looking like. It's an absolute showstopper, and it is so, so delicious. It's sweet, it's fresh, it's vibrant, and it's scrumptious. So I will show that to you when it is finally, finally done with those pine nuts on the top. But it's safe to say that it's going to be scrummy. What 
doing now, Mama? Well, we had a bit of a disaster with the blinis. She um, burnt all the blinis. Went all the way to Parma to buy them from the English sort of uh, place I know. Uh, 25 in the oven, forgot about them. Burnt, burnt all the bloody Bellinis! Burnt to a crisp. So we're, we're now very innovative. innovative. We'll and have a wee, the raw wee. And we are now doing the second lot um, of ble pretend Bellinis with brown bread that we've cut out <laughs> with, with the top of a Portland and Mason tea jar. I would say that that was very creative of me. Yes. Yes. Anyway, Looking go. fabulous, Mummy. Anyway, Very there classy. We go. It's our first Easter. There's going to be a few things that we definitely need to improve. Improve on. I think they're done. So we have just taken the lamb out, taken the tinfoil off, and it's going back in for 10 minutes to crisp up the top. But as you can see, it is really going to fall apart. Nailed it, mummy. Nailed it. Okay, right. She's going back in, and then we're gonna get these beauties out. I'm gonna take off the foil. Oh, wow. Careful, because that's gonna, that's very... Very, very hot. There we go. Oh, oh wow, it's completely full enough to bone, even without. Oh, it's going to be up. Don't forget, we're going to put the fennel in that oven, probably, because yes. we're going to have to. I mean, for, for, for a little oven, it packs a big punch, doesn't it? That, it really does. Um, it's a fantastic oven. I, I mean, it goes far as to say, actually, this it's is... It's probably the best oven we've, we've had. had. I do love an aga, but this is mm. fantastic. Yeah, well, an aga's just for the sausages, really. Yeah. The yeah. sausage dogs. The truth you know, the aga one. The aga? The two absolutely barking mad chefs. The table is looking so, so beautiful. Oh, today is going to be absolutely incredible. We're going to have to use the 1970s Denby grandmas. We've <laughs> got 14 of everything. <laughs> We're so gorgeous. Mm. Oh, it's actually very strong, that. Marcus are hosting the guests outside whilst Mummy and I get the show on the road. We're just making the salsa verde quickly and it is a secret family recipe. It is absolutely, oh, if you like salsa verde, you need to stop. Get into that description box down below and look at this recipe because it's everything. So what we do is we've got a small handful of coriander, small handful of parsley. We've got mint. So I've got a little bit of mint, and then we need some garlic, we need olive oil, we need anchovies, white wine, Dijon mustard, a tiny drizzle of honey, salt and pepper, and you are not going to know yourself. It is that delicious. So I'm gonna pop everything in. We've got the zhuzhah. 
the zhuzha, and then this is going to be the final piece of the resistance that we're just going to drizzle over the shredded lamb. It's going to be delicious. So we are finally ready to rumble and as always just wanted to give you a very very quick glimpse before everything gets tossed and everything gets eaten. So this is my famous fennel gratin. I never ever do a lunch party without it. It is just a winner. So you've got fennel, double cream and grillé cheese. This is my bulgur wheat salad of absolute dreams. You've got cucumber, mango, papaya, cranberries, pine nuts, pistachios. You've got those gorgeous pomegranate seeds. So many herbs. You've got mint, parsley and coriander and it's absolute scrumptious topped with those gorgeously toasted pine nuts. This is my Moroccan rose harissa marinated vegetables. We've got the couscous as the bed at the bottom, those beautiful vegetables on the top and then you've got melted goat's cheese topped with coriander. The shredded lamb of absolute dreams. Now this is what I wanted my shredded lamb to be like last weekend. However, we did it again and it is sensational. Now these were actually a crudite or a canapé that didn't, didn't cook in time. So we've got some random and rogue prawns over there, but you know what, tasty. And then we've got some gorgeous roasted potatoes from the garden and they look absolutely divine. So this is our Easter lunch. Bon appétit everybody and happy Easter. Cheers. <laughs> Secretly so hungover. <laughs> Cheers everybody. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Now the boys have lit the fire outside. Look at this. You chaps enjoying yourself, or chaps and chapettas. And on, look at this. Oh my goodness, this looks incredible.
my angels. I feel like I haven't picked up the camera really at all in the last couple of days, but we have literally been having the most magical time. The sun is finally shining and Easter has been just magical. We've made so many incredible memories with family, with friends, in the new house. It's just been incredible. We've been lighting the fires inside, outside, eating copious amounts of food and drinking just scrumptious wines. And uh, gosh, honestly, I'm smiling from ear to ear. But as the sun is shining and on my last day, I thought we would do a very, very quick walk through the garden. Gardens. Finally, the wind has also died down because it has actually been very, very windy. The sun has been shining, but we've had, I think we've actually had just the last of a storm that's come off of Morocco. So we've actually got quite a lot of yellow sand, which is very, very unusual for Mallorca. But anyway, the sun is shining. I should not be complaining. So for the final time and for the final time in this vlog, let's go for a little mooch around the garden. So here we have lots of gorgeous oranges. We've got some birds of paradise which are just fabulous, so vibrant and absolutely gorgeous. Those olives are doing very, very well in the pots and just the terraces looking absolutely scrumptious. <laughs> the cockerels are in full swing and so are the oranges. Look! at how many oranges are on these trees and also just how sweet these tiny little fountains are. I cannot wait to bring the sausages down here. I think with the chickens and the little bunny rabbits they're going to have lots of fun and have lots of little areas to come and have a little drinky. Oh, this is absolutely magical. I can't believe we're going home this evening, but I am very much looking forward to getting back to those scrumptious sausages. And I've got a lot to go back for, I can tell you that. <laughs> Work is literally going crazy at the moment, but I am absolutely loving it. But it is actually only four short weeks until I'm back here with my entire team for an enormous photo shoot. It's gonna be absolutely insane. And I cannot wait to see how the garden is going to bloom. There are so many buds. Look at that. I think this is going to be fully adorned by the time we come back. We've also got some gorgeous David Austin roses that are starting to bloom. Look at these vibrant beauties. And here you can actually see the end of the sandstorm that we had yesterday. Look at the look at the dust and the sand that are all over the roses. But look at that beauty there. I'm so sad that it's actually gone slightly overcast. The clouds are just covering that sunshine, but it has literally been the most beautiful morning. I've been literally sitting outside and I've caught quite a lot of sun on my shoulders, if truth be known. <laughs> I had a shower and wash and blow dry my hair and the top of my forehead is looking rather rouge. <laughs> I think my skin is very happy to see some vitamin D. But these gardens, I feel like I'm bringing you round here again but every time I bring you there's something that's different and something that has been you know what a little bit of tender love and care has gone into it so as you can see all of the walls have been redone and just so beautifully done oh look we've got lots of chickens over there lots of chickens over there chicken run chicken run and we also have a chicken and all of her chicks I showed you the other day oh there she is okay
just too cute. Okay, I don't want to go too close to her because obviously she is trying to protect her babies and she is doing such a fantastic job. But if I just quietly walk down here, I'm going to try and do it so she doesn't actually see me. So hopefully she will stay calm. But she's got about 15 babies there. It is absolutely remarkable. Let's see if we can try and get a little bit further down. Okay. I am really safariing in here. There she is. Oh my goodness, just the very best end to what has been the most incredible weekend. As you can see, I've really been safariing <laughs> to be able to show them to you, but I'm going to make sure that she doesn't take them out into the open clear because we do actually have a few birds flying around and we're worried that they are going to swoop down and pick them up. So she's being so smart and having them in the hedgerow there but they are so cute they are so tiny and so fluffy and literally the exact little easter chick that you imagine oh you're very vocal today mr cockerel but this is just a sea of purple at the moment it is absolutely beautiful and we are literally weeks away from the David Austin roses blooming to perfection. We actually have a very, very exciting photo shoot at the end of next week. I can't sadly tell you too much, but once the photographs are taken and published, I will of course be able to share them with you and explain kind of what the shoot is about, but sadly I can't. <laughs> You know me, I love sharing everything and I will share it when the time is right and when I am allowed But there's so many exciting things happening and I just can't wait to share it all with you But this is just the most remarkable David Austin Rose Garden Literally the full width of this is pale pink and white roses It is quite the sight We've also got a beautiful tree here in full bloom since we've been here when I showed you last time, it was literally just blooming at the very top. And in the last two days, as you can see, we've got lots of pink and it looks absolutely stunning. Look at those florals on the tree. Just so beautiful. And I cannot wait to see what it's going to look like in three or four weeks time. Now the most scrumptious tree <laughs> in the entire garden is in fact this tree here. We don't have any green figs just yet, but this produces the most scrumptious figs you have ever tried in your entire life. So I cannot wait for that. Beautiful lavender. Now that's actually a project that we are going to in fact do. This was actually lavender at the front here just in front of the roses and it was very patchy so we took out the sort of dead and barky lavender left in what is doing really really well as you can see and so we are going to in fact fill in the gaps with beautiful lavender but this really is a garden of absolute dreams for any fragrance <laughs> company or brand you've got just about every tree every national tree from every country in this garden and we have of course in fact inherited the garden from the previous owners and just putting our mark and putting just that little extra tender love and care that it really needed and as you know we are garden enthusiasts my parents are very very knowledgeable about trees and planting and about rewilding and replanting and different flowers and how they should be kept and pruned and all of that jazz so I'm really really looking forward to seeing how my family sort of bring this garden to life 
but it's safe to say that it is just looking so beautiful. Even this here, this wall was non-existent and so we have in fact put some new Santani stone in and concreted it and look at these beautiful florals. They are looking absolutely stunning and it's incredible to see when the sunshine goes in. Look, these ones are already packing up. They literally close up every single night. So these ones here are still got their beautiful heads open. And then look at this. These ones here are already closed up for the evening. Nope, we're going to bed. <laughs> and it is literally just so stunning to see. Then we come up here between the fabulously porky cherubs. <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite places in the garden amongst these two cherubs. They are so beautiful and they remind me of my grandmother. Oh my goodness me, what a beautiful, beautiful sight. And then you come into the little hedge and ball garden. Now this, I believe this is a plum tree, but as you can see at the moment, it's looking a little bit sad. It has been pruned within an inch of its life, but it is next door to the most magnificent orange blossom. Now I wish you could smell through the camera lens, but if I can try to explain, this is the most stunning, outrageously sweet jasmine orange blossom vanillas oh i just want to be orange blossom i want to be doused in it bathed in it it is velvety it is sweet it is absolutely scrumptious it's delicate yet it's still got a gorgeous fresh cream to it i mean there are no other words other than just beautiful and look at all of those bumblebees working their magic oh this is so so beautiful there is something about nature and look at all of those bumblebees having the times of their lives <laughs> So walking back up the garden, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you the full garden before we have to leave to the airport. So I suppose I'm going to have to leave a little something until next time. And we've got lots more oranges here. Let's go this way, I think. And let's go and have a little look at the riverbed. We've got some more birds of paradise here. And we've been thinking about, oh, there's a brown cat. He's not one of our cats. Hello! Hi, Mr. Newbie! Oh, you're definitely not friendly. Okay, we'll not be walking that direction. He's actually, in fact, hissing at me. Okay, well, we've got Hamel! <laughs> oh gosh, who would have known? Who would have known I would have turned into a cat person? Anywho, obviously, for those of you who have subscribed to my YouTube channel, will know that we had a big storm in the winter, well actually at the end of last year, and we sadly lost a tree, which was in fact a very important tree because it sat at the bottom of the most beautiful view of the bridge and the beautiful riverbed. And actually you can see we have some water. So this is from the waterfall that we had over the last few days and Look at it, this is amazing. I've actually never seen water in here before. So we are needing to put something very, very special here. And actually I think it needs to be something rather mature because you need to have a little bit of gravitas and a little bit of a wow factor to this magnificent view. So we're thinking to potentially pop in quite a mature olive. Think that beautiful old trunk overlooking that stunning view. I think it will look absolutely remarkable. Let's walk back up to the house, over the bridge and underneath the olive trees oh, for the last time before we have to leave for the airport. But I truly hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope that I was able to share as much as I possibly could and also be able to live in the moment and have a wonderful time with my family. But from all of the comments and the emails and the messages and the Instagram messages, 
I think you are enjoying it, but please do let me know in those comments down below and, and let me know if there is something else that you want to see as well. You all seem to love the hosting and entertaining and coming to Mallorca and seeing the gardens. You also love a little bit of fashion, dabble with a bit of beauty as well. So hopefully you're seeing just about everything. But like I said, if there is anything else that you want to see, then please, please let me know in those comments down below. But look at this. I'm literally walking underneath the most stunning archway of olive trees up over the bridge of absolute dreams and where we were literally just standing talking about the olive tree. So I've just turned my camera around so that you can see you drive underneath the beautiful olives, you drive over the bridge and you look down over the most beautiful view and that's literally where we were just standing looking at hopefully what's going to be an olive tree and then we walk over the bridge a few more cherubs <laughs> underneath the olive trees and then back through to the main entrance of the house oh my goodness me it's just been the most incredible trip and to see so many things happen in sh such a short space of time i haven't actually showed you the casita but i think i'm gonna have to save that until next time otherwise i'm gonna have a very grumpy husband because we would have missed our flight but oh this is just magical literally magical and a dream come true so i think this might be the perfect way to bring this vlog to an end we've walked around the gardens and we have ended up back at the front of the house it has been the most incredible trip and like always i just feel so lucky and blessed to be able to share it all with you so i truly hope you guys have enjoyed this one like i always say there is so much coming and trust me when i say there really really is we'll be back here in just four short weeks and like i said i'm bringing my whole team out here it's going to be a bit of a different vlog because it's going to be very fast paced lots of different brands that we're shooting for but it's going to be absolutely incredible and I cannot wait to show you the casita it is really starting to take place it's painted the air conditioning units are going in so you'll really really start to see the foundations of the inside of the casita you can hear the banging going on because <laughs> the builders are working their magic in there but sadly it is time to bring this vlog to an end I truly hope you guys have enjoyed this one for the last time happy easter i hope you all had the happiest most wholesome times with copious amounts of chocolate but i truly hope you guys have enjoyed this one so until next time sending you so much love and thank you so much for watching